high speed rail is one of the big components in the bank's planning, and it it has so many beneficial aspects to the United States that it, it's really a almost it alone would make the this uh, a great purpose. Uh, so basically, we started the association in 2009 with the mission to specifically build widespread public business and political support for a major investment in a national high speed rail network. And so this was prior to uh, this bank. And so the, our mission and the bank's mission actually worked very well together that, that, you know, we were already sort of working in the same direction for the same sort of a large investment. Um, Next, I think we lost the slideshow. Okay, so there's our uh, national vision that we launched when we launched the association. And, and the idea with this was is that uh, it's similar to our interstate highway system. It was a connected network that literally pulled the whole country together into a modern, uh, it's basically the 21st century uh, highway system for the country, but it's based on uh, advanced rail rather than the older modes. Uh, next slide, please. So when we launched the association, we launched that vision and along with it, the idea, this idea of a complete transportation system. And when you're missing rail, which is a big, uh, important component in the middle, uh, which you can see here on the left are the more local, on the right is the more national, and the middle section was where rail serves the most, and it's completely missing in this country. So we end up with overloading aviation, trying to take up some of the slack and overloading the car system to take up some of the slack, causing both of them to malfunction as well. So uh, that's why it's important to actually build out a complete system, get the pieces in that are missing that actually can handle huge quantities of, of people and goods. And then that sort of makes all the rest of the transportation system work more smoothly in the country. Next slide, please. So part of this idea of the complete transportation system includes rail at multi-levels. So we've got the national high-speed rail network for the large scale, big bulk transportation, uh, longer distances, trunk, main trunk lines around the country. Then that ties in with regional commuter and metro systems that, that cover a local region. And then that ties in with local trams and streetcar systems which cover the neighborhood and the town and the city scale. And then the, the fourth level would be uh, an extensive bicycle network. And when you add, and a walking, you know, the ability to actually walk in a city, you add all of those together, you end up with a complete green transportation system that literally builds prosperity in the country as we go forward. Next slide, please. And so the, the, the final piece of that is the, the uh, urbanism and the development and the walkability and the mixed use that goes, that gets infilled around closely around the stations, creating complete communities with dense walkable mixed use. And this is where you can really provide large quantities of affordable housing because the ability to move around and live without a, the expense of a car literally creates affordable housing just by that. And then, the close proximity and the easy access to jobs and things by the rail system keeps your, your transportation costs very low as well. Next slide, please. So we, we were moving along with all this and then COVID comes along and disrupts our whole world and turns everything upside down. And, and next slide, uh, kind of leaves us with the point of now we're all looking forward to returning to normal but what really is normal in transportation is our question. And is this really what we want to return to? Next. Uh, when, you, when you think back, a lot of people probably forgot a lot of this because it's been over a year since we've really had these kind of levels. But this is what we were dealing with day in and day out in all of our transportation systems. Overloaded, failing, uh, endless waste of time and energy sitting around waiting for things to move, being stuck behind lines and lines of cars, lines of people. It's not an efficient way to move a country, especially a big prosperous country like the United States. So next slide. Our idea with, you know, and this, this is some of the things spelled out of what we actually had. Epic congestion daily in every region, nonstop accidents, injuries and deaths, constant delays and hassles transportation currently is the number one cause of climate change. So we're paying high costs and we're getting low mobility out of it. 
Yet we're actually as a nation spending hundreds of billions of dollars every year on this system and it just keeps getting worse. So the whole idea of the way we fund transportation needs to change and how what we fund and what we invest in needs to change. And that's what we feel that this bank would have a, a big role to play in that sort of a shift of the paradigm. Next slide. And so what, you know, our idea is again, is we can do better than this with a new direction in transportation. Uh, next. And, and this idea gels perfectly with the Biden administration, the whole idea of build back better. That's now the new theme that's sort of permeating uh, the country. And we agree with it 100%. This is what a better vision for transportation looks like in America. Next, please. And so what we did quickly was we laid out a, uh, a stimulus plan for the Biden administration just to get started. And, and we came up with 15 projects that could be fast tracked uh, that'll create millions of jobs and, and are literally, a number of them are actually ready to go or already under construction like California. Is it next please? And so these are the first five that we felt were the highest priority. These, again, as I said, some of these are, California is already under construction. There's additional phases that can be funded. These can be quickly moved into uh, creating immediate jobs. These are the most shovel ready projects in the country, all except for number four. Uh, which is a fast moving one. We put it in here because of the, the leadership with Microsoft and everybody that's behind that project. Uh, next one, please. And then we listed out 10 more projects to actually get started and, and get pieces of the national network underway. And, and the idea with these is that they'll spread the wealth throughout numerous regions of the country, create jobs in all sorts of regions where there's jobs needed, coastal regions, interior regions, north, south, red states, blue states. That was really the idea behind this was to, to build pieces of the national network that we need, but do it in a phasing way that we can bring all of Americans along. Next slide, please. And there's what it looks like on a map. Those are all pieces of our national vision for the country. And as you can see, a few of these only need a few more pieces. And then all of a sudden you've got big main lines that go a thousand miles covering numerous states and numerous connections. Uh, next, please. And, and as I said, these, these projects, these 15 projects will benefit 23 states, red and blue, urban and rural, and a variety of diverse regions, and will help America bounce back quickly from the pandemic and the resulting economic depression, and help unify a divided nation over a common infrastructure project that will literally set up the nation for a very prosperous and sustainable future. Next, please. So uh, Alfeca asked me to actually look at what the bank is proposing, a trillion dollar investment over a 10 year time span. And uh, this is what this slide is about, is basically the general industry accepted uh, number for approximate numbers of jobs that are created uh, per dollars invested is about 10,000 jobs for every billion dollars investment. That of course varies up and down depending on details, but that's a good average number. So investing, $100 billion per year for 10 years will literally create a million new jobs every single year, year after year for 10 years straight. And then when the system is complete, completed, the construction, there'll be millions of jobs to actually run it and manage it, and those jobs go into perpetuity. So uh, it's, it's a million job creator, a 10 million job creator to build the system, and then a multi-million dollar permanent job creator for all the operations and maintenance and everything. And then all the development that will take place around the stations is just millions more jobs. So that's pretty much kind of the summary of this and how important this would be for the nation. It's a major solution to affordable housing, a major climate solution, a major job solution. And doing all this will literally revamp and revitalize the entire manufacturing sector of the United States that was pretty much shuttered over the years from moving things to China and other countries. So. Thank you all for your attention.